Hi all, welcome to my channel, welcome to my world, this is the world of Wayne, happy Monday. Today we're going to be doing pack 8 of the Agora models release to build the Mercedes W196R, the Sterling Moss Mercedes. How the devil is everyone on this brand new week? Today it's a bank holiday in the UK, so we're all off today. But uh, I thought I'd get up extra early to make sure we get this uh, Mercedes Monday underway. Now, this weekend, if you haven't noticed that the Scow Model World podcast with myself and Dave Howe from Tyrrell Models have dropped. If you haven't listened to that podcast, get yourself a model, get it on your workbench, click on this link and listen to us talk about the world of part work models, kit models, and what you need to start beginning if you are getting into this hobby. But that link's just up here. Uh, I'm sure you're going to enjoy that as a series going forward. Uh, the next podcast we're doing, I believe we are interviewing Mike Lane, so that's going to be uh, an interesting one. But uh, yeah, check that out. Uh, today, we're going to be uh, putting some more wheels on. <laughs> as you can see, uh, in my weekend, I made the easy wheel. And I made the spoke wheel again. I am getting easier. It does get easier the more you do it. I think we've only got one more of those to create now. So uh, that's going to be good. But that's where we're going to be starting this pack off. Which is why I've got some hot water here as well. They do provide two tyres in this pack. One for the easy one. One for the uh, regular feature as well. So that when we put these on, it's up to us which one we put on. But uh, there you go. Without further ado, let's get cracking. So 548, the one without the B, is the one for the regular tyre. This is the one that we've created, to get this out, for the spokes. So here's the tyre, just putting that into some boiling water there. And it takes about a minute to soften up. While that's soaking, I will just get myself a JM screw out the bag here, because that's what we're going to be attaching this to the car with. I'm telling you, the conditions of some of my rags, this is how much polishing and stuff gets on my models and dusting and God knows what else I've been using this for. I should get myself some new ones really, shouldn't I? Okay, so let's fish this out and I'm going to push the uh, spoke one that we've done. This is the regular one where I've created my own spokes into this tyre. So I am just shaking off any excess water there and just get this pushed in. There you go. I'm just going to check it's okay on that side, which it is. This side just needs pushing back a bit. And there you go. That's the tyre completed. Dry this off. And while that's doing that, I'm going to open the other tyre. Because this one's going to be for the easy version of the tyre. So I'm just going to let that soak in there. Now this is going to be going on the front left of the car, which is this side here. So it's a case of putting this black plastic section just on the front here. Just checking it's got a way to go in. I think it has actually. It's got a little pin just in the top there, which is going to go into the hole on this side here. That's going to go on the car just like that there. And it's going to be held in with this JM screw, which is actually going through a washer. Got the washer here, metal washer. And just screw this in as tight as I can get it. That's perfect. I can't turn that screw anymore. And that's that tyre in place. All that's left to do then is take the hubcap. And I'll just put that in there. Just like that. And that's that tyre in place. I can put the frame of this car to one side. And even though we're not going to be using the tyre. I will do the same with the easy version, which looks like that. So once again, fish that out, dry it off, and just push this into place. Should be quite easy to get in. And again, make sure it's fitting perfectly around one side and perfectly around the other, and dry that off. Now, because I'm not gonna be using this wheel, what I am gonna do is just follow the instructions of what it wants me to do. So again, I do have a little lug on there to go in this hole to hold this section into place like that and then on the other side i'll take the washer that i'm not going to use drop that into the top and put the hub in there and that's another wheel completed that i'm not actually going to be using and that is all there is to do in that stage the advantage of doing the wheels is it gives me a good idea to uh 
clean my workbench because look I've got all of these stains on here and I don't quite know how I've got them they're not coming off which means that's probably time to get a new work mat I think since when the channel's begun I've gone through about 20 of these so far <laughs> Okay, this is stage 49 here. We're going to be installing the rear brake distributor and brake line. So let's get all of these out. We've got some tiny pipes in here. And it looks like we have got a little uh, distributor there as well. The first thing we're going to need is part 49A. This is the front chassis upper rod. So bringing over the car, let's get this the best I can. We do have a hole just here, which is going to have the front chassis upper rod in. This looks just like that. Now this kind of goes underneath these larger pipes here, underneath the pipes here, and it's actually going to connect to, go on, this is fiddly, to the bodywork chassis just on this bar here behind the expansion tank here. So I'm just going to get this into position there and there. That's perfect. That's exactly how that's going to look. It's going to be held in with DM screws from each side. So that's one. I do use my bigger screwdriver on any frame or chassis pieces because I tend to find they do go in a lot easier. And of course, I do use my oil. Now on that podcast, you will hear, hear me talking about essential things that you need when you start these builds. <laughs> Stupid me forgot oil. But uh, yep, that's that in place there. Now if I turn this upside down, being very gentle here, we're going to be putting this bar in place. As you see, it's got kind of like a hook on this end. That's just going to go over the top of that section here. And then this side is going to fit onto the hole that we got on just this edge. So looking at this one first, once again, that's a DM screw. And then the other side's a DM screw as well. But this time, if I just give this a quick turn around, it's actually going to go in from the front here. Just like this, once again, I'll use my bigger screwdriver to get that nice and tight. Now these larger pipes here, I'm not quite sure where they go at the moment, so I am aware that they're here. I've got a funny feeling they're probably going to eventually find their way towards the radiator at the front of the car. These do look like pipes. We'll check that out later on. But, but that's in place. I now need the brake line distributor, which is this free gang lead here we've got two smaller pipes coming off each side these are definitely going to need a bit of glue i don't trust any pipes anymore most builds that i've been uh, doing lately seem to want to have the pipes fall out as i'm installing them in and i just don't take that risk anymore so i uh, i'm gonna glue everything in from this moment forward i make a commitment i am now always going to be gluing things in because what happens when a piece falls off is I end up having to trawl through all the instructions to figure out where it comes from. Uh, and the last one that happened on was the uh, Lamborghini Miura. But uh, all done now. So there you go, that's in place. And then I need 49E, which is this great big long pipe that they provide. Again, some glue around here. and get that into place. Okay, let's bring over the car again. That this distributor here is going to go into the hole just at the top here. Once again, I'm going to put a bit of glue in that hole. And I'm also going to be putting some glue on nipples on each side. Just like that. Because this is going to go in here. So as you can see, that's in there like that. The pipes that go from either side are going to go on these nipples here. Might be best to put them ones in first, actually. That's one. That one's two. Just going to hold that into place. And there you go. All in like that. Which means this long pipe now goes under the chassis here, like this. They do have it pinned to this cross beam there, which I'll put in in a second. 
around the chassis and do you remember the distributor that we had in the front just here it's going to plug into the spare side of that nipple there once again i'm going to put a bit of uh, glue on that stop it coming off and get that into place and that is all there is to do in that stage i will tidy this wire up afterwards and clip that into place so in stage 50 tiny details again we're going to be building the gear lever so i need the support that's going to be going over the top i need the base which looks just like this and i need to just quite simply push the four lugs on this into the top of the gear lever housing here Take the gear shaft, and that's just going to go all the way down the bottom here. So it comes out the bottom, like that. And we're going to secure that in with some KP screws. Why am I talking in plurals today? It's one KP screw. <laughs> now when we put this in, we have got a little sort of like dome section, which is going to go on top of this. That's going to stop the gear twisting. And then put the KP screw through that section there. You know what? That was a lot harder than I thought it would be. But there you go. That's the uh, gear stick in place just like that. And just behind this silver pipe here, I'll point to it where we've got this brown rod going through. We've got two holes in the chassis just there. This is going to be going into position just above those holes. We're not pinning that line into place. It's going to go sitting on top just like that. It's held in with two DM screws. Now, the pipe that we've got coming from the transmission is going to go into the base of that gearbox we just put in. So I'll get this lined up and put in. There you go. It fits into the middle hole. Pretty hard to show you. But there you go. That's how that looks. Let's put that to one side because we need this other junction point here for pipes, which looks like this. Okay. Get me glue ready for this. <laughs> Okay, I need a spot of glue just on this side first. And that's for this small pipe here. Then I need this junction point looking like that. Again, a bit of glue. Just on one of these pins. Let's put that small pipe into this one here. So now they're connected. I need the medium sized pipe, which is this length here. More glue. That's going to go on the other nipple on this side. And get that one in. When we're doing stuff like this, it does enforce the amount of detail we're actually putting on these models. And then the very long pipe is just going into the end here. Bring the car back over. And between this pipe and the chassis, I don't know if you can see there, there's actually a hole, which again, I don't want this moving, so I am going to put some glue just into that hole. Which is going to hold this detail here. And they passed all of these pipes through underneath the pipe there. Now the medium sized wire that came out of that, I'm holding it here, is actually just going to go into the nipple. I don't know if you can see it on that section just there. This silver section has come down. There is a nipple on there. I am going to put some glue. Again, don't want these pipes coming out. Just on there. And I'll get that pipe into place. Now the big pipe, the big long pipe, which was coming out the back of that section, is going to go onto the nipple on the underside of this silver section here. I'm sorry I'm not naming the parts. If I start naming the parts, and I'm not naming them incorrectly, <laughs> oh, you know what happens in the comments. <laughs> and that is all there is to do in that stage. In stage 51 here, we've got the construction for the steering box. So not much to do in this one. Again, I'm going to bring over the car here and I'm going to just show you 
on the front where this is going next to this point here this is going to be going just there like that it's actually held in with a hm screws and again we're controlling the steering so you do want to get this in as tight as you can that's perfect that's in there like that now you see we've got a keyhole pattern there that's what it's actually going to go into once it's gone through i am going to put some oil on this to be honest with you anything to do with the steering wheel and the steering i am putting oil on so when this comes out the bottom it's going to go into this rod just here I'm going to be holding it in with a dm screw from the other side and this is where it's good that we can actually just put the car on its side here to get this screw in you want to hold the top like i am there to stop it coming out it is metal so you can make it tight and there we go that's in place i'm also now just gonna put some oil around the teeth on this side never have too much oil for things like this excellent now it's very similar on the other side we've got this piece here which is going to be going onto the frame here and it's pinned into this side here of the steering like that now this is held in this time though with um screws now it takes three of these screws but just to mix it up a bit underneath this section we're actually holding that in with pm screws again i'm speaking in plurals i meant pm screw it's just one screw that's holding that in and there we go that can go in nice and tight as well so the steering is now actually more fixed in place and as you can see it's actually turning both wheels now that is all there is to do in that stage in stage 52 we're going to start to assemble the radiator now so we've got the radiator frame here just going to lay this out as it needs to be and basically this section here is the bottom section that's just going to follow the holes that we've got here and it's going to be pushed in just like that and then this section here is the top section get it round the right way and that's going to fit over the top like that now this time we're going to need to put some screws in and they're going to be taking three ep screws you know what Wayne you really do need to learn the difference between three and three <laughs> I am aware of my pitfalls <laughs> three th the I need a uh, elocution lessons three and there you go that's the radiator frame in place and that's all there is to do in that stage in stage 53 here we've got the panels for the radiator get these two out and they're just going to be following the shape that we got there so this one's going to be going in this side like this sort of clicks in and the other one's just going to go into the other side like this and again just push that in perfect that's got to be the quickest stage <laughs> in this whole build because that's all there is to do in stage 54 we're going to be putting some detailing on just looking what we've got to do i think i am going to just merge stages 53 and 54 together because these are again just pushing so this one is going to go here like this pushed in and the same just on the other side like that then we've got some fine detail to put in so i am going to be using some glue we've got some nipples just on this side here so on the first longer shaft i've got this silver detail which is just going to be going on like this then i've got a pipe which is going to be leading this nipple here to the very far sided one yeah so that now looks like that now the last details going into this slot just here get this in 
so it's this way round and it's going to be held in with an LP screw just through the slot at the top. If you want my advice, I'd put the screw through that section there first and then push it onto that part like that. Now we're going to be putting this on the front of the car. So bringing the car over, I'm going to be holding the radiator this way and I'm going to be pushing this onto the points here. What I think I will do is just put a bit of oil just on here. It's going to help slide this into position. Now the fronts might fall out of these because we haven't screwed them in yet. I think I got lucky then. Make sure that these go above the brackets that we got there. So that should slide on perfectly. This top section just here needs to slot into the top of the radiator there, like that. I'm gonna hold this into place with some VM screws just here and here. And that's the second one. So now that's in like that. Again, I'm gonna use some glue here and put it on this nipple that we just got on the radiator just here because the one coming from the expansion tank there is just going to go into the front of the radiator. So just to show you how everything goes, because it's impossible to show you this, the silver section from here goes into the radiator just there. The plastic uh, rod that we had here attaches to the frame here. It's a hole in that and this side here, and then the pipe from the expansion tank here goes into the radiator here. But that is all there is to do in that stage. In stage 55, the interior starts now. We're going to be doing the seats. I said seats, didn't I? Why am I saying everything plural at the moment? <laughs> We're doing the seat. And all I'm going to do is on the back side of the seat, I've got a bit of foam, which is just going to go in there like that. And when we push this in, we have got some tabs here, which are sort of going to line it up into the holes that we've got at the bottom there. But these flaps are what we're actually going to be attaching it down to. You might see a hole in there like that. So I'll get this in. Because it's a rubbery material, it is quite a fiddly thing to do. Get this lined up and get these BP screws in place. And there you go. That's in place, and that's all there is to do in that stage. In stage 56, we're going to be doing the seat padding and the headrest. Get all these open. So again, let's get these parts out. So this is what this looks like. Going to be taking this pad in again, that's going to go in here, like that. Then I'm going to be taking this plate and it's going to go underneath all of these tabs. So all the tabs are sitting on top there. And I'm going to secure that in with EP screws. You don't have to go too tight with these, just enough to hold the foam in place. And that's perfect. So then this is just going to fit into the base of this section here. Slide it all the way down. So it looks like that. And we have these tabs visible at the front. Because then I have got this little foot plate to put in. Which is going to go in the top just like that. That's held in from the other side with AP screws. Two of those, one each side. In the three holes in the middle... That's going to be BP screws. And the two holes in the back are PP screws. So now that's in securely. And then finally we've got the headrest, which is just going to go over the two holes that we can see there. And it's held in with two AP screws. So with them in place, that's the seat completed. In stage 57, we're going to be preparing the cockpit floor panel. We do have these pieces just here. It is going to be quite a quick stage, this one. 
because all we're going to do is we're going to be taking these little points here and pushing them into the gaps on the bottom of this floor pan here. I'm just going to make sure that they hold themselves. Yep, they do. And one just in this side. You heard that snap in there, actually. So that looks like that. And that's all there is to do in that stage. Now in stage 58, we're gonna be fixing the clutch housing, the bell housing in. You will notice that we do have these chocks again. I did explain how these work in previous videos. Basically, when you're working on the vehicle, you can actually put these under the chassis at four points to keep the wheels off the ground. It just says pushing down on your model. But uh, I very rarely use them, to be honest with you. So I'll keep them to one side. I will bring over the car again, though, because the clutch housing is just going to go onto the two lugs that we can see here and down the bottom. So when I put this on, it's going to fit on. Oops, get this in place like that. Now it is held on. You can't really see it. Perhaps I should put this on first. Uh, I'll put these on with uh, two AP screws. So that's the first one going on. Hopefully that gives you an idea of how this goes. And there you go. That's that bell housing on and that's all there is to do in that stage. Stage 59 is the cockpit floor panel. Looking like that. We've got this section just here, fitting over the top of this section here, turning it over, it's gonna be held in with four BP screws. I wanna take this panel here, and that's just gonna go in here, make sure it's the right way around, like that. Once again, that's held in with yet another BP screw. Just from the underside. And then we're going to want to mount this cockpit into the car. So, if I hold that like that, now you can see the reason why they didn't want us to attach this section here down. Because what you want to do is just pull this slightly forward so you can get this section in here. Make sure you probably put it in this way first so that the clutch bell housing is encased in this. Now we're going to secure this from the underside first with some BP screws and get four of these screws in place. So that's that cockpit in place. We can re-tighten the screws here. So there you go, that's completed and in place as well. That's all there is to do in that stage. So I will put that to one side, even though I'm gonna to have to bring it back in a second, because I'm gonna be detailing the cockpit frame and fitting the steering wheel. Now I am gonna do this slightly out of order because we do need to change first the dials that we put into the frame that looks just like this. So what I need to do is get the old details out and replace them with these new dials that we've got in here. Now I never glued these in before, so I think I am gonna drop a bit of glue now because I've got no intention of taking them out again. <laughs> Now, they do have a sticky backing on them, but what I noticed on the first lot they put in, they, it, that sticky backing wasn't really doing a great job, so that's why I've uh, put some glue in here as well. There we go, we've got two dials in there. Okay, now the first thing I wanna do is take this little black detail, and I've got another detail which I've just dropped, which is gonna go into the top of that, like that. Now, as you can see, it's left the lug for this section here to now plug into the bottom of this. So it looks like this part, which looks like a choke to me or something, has gone all the way through this. So this part is gonna go on the detail we've got from here, just into this side here, from the underside, just like that. It's gonna be held in with an AP screw. 
and showing my age if that is what I think it is then uh, you don't really see chokes on cars anymore do you <laughs> so screw this in with the AP screw now on the ends here I've got these details just going into the plugs here they are shaped so I just need to make sure I've got these in re-looking at the pictures they should go in the other way <laughs> see I make errors so you don't have to so they should look like that now I need the steering wheel which looks like this and they want me to take the steering wheel just off this steering column so we can get this all threaded in so I'm just going to remove these two screws here just like that and we can take this panel here off as well now this is going to be going through the hole here and it'll be coming out the top like this where I can now put this panel back on so it's going to keep that over the top like that I'm going to secure those two sections there with BM screws and now I can reattach the steering wheel the dashboard panel is going to be going over the top here just like that and that's going to be held in from the underside with JP screws and then this cable that we've got left here is just going to go behind the choke once again I am just gonna touch a little bit of uh, glue on the end there because I don't want that cable coming out just like that and that <laughs> is all there is to do in that stage and that's all there is to do in that pack that's looking really good and as you can see that's how the steering wheel is going to turn when that's in the car now I haven't got a clue how this goes I'm guessing kind of like this I'm uh I don't know <laughs> I'm guessing that will fit flat in there like that. I'm guessing we'll have a case to put over the top. I've already threaded that in where it goes. Kind of guessing that's how that will look. No idea what's happening with the choke cable, but uh, you get the idea. That is the end of that stage, and that's all there is to do in that pack. When I first looked at this pack, I looked at the instructions and thought, it's going to be an easy one, this is. Recording time for this is two and a half hours. <laughs> It was fiddly, but it's looking really good. Now, to keep tuned, make sure you click that subscribe button. But I really hope you liked that video. If you did, also, please remember to give me a thumbs up. Take care of yourselves. I will see you later.